Hi guys, so today I'm in the village of Ardmore and I'm on my way to see St. Declan's church and the graveyard as well but I thought I'd just bring you down here first just to have a look at the scenery with the cliffs off out there and on this side as well and it's a, a beautiful day and it's quite warm but there's a, a breeze blowing as well And look at those clouds isn't that lovely but um, I'm going to take you for a walk up along the village first I just think that it was so nice that you might appreciate it as well so this is just a little sculpture in the middle of the a roundabout in the village it's a fish boat. that's cool And you have fish in the boat there. And the whale's tail. Now I've never been here before. But I thought the village was quite beautiful. Well looked after. Lovely colours. Orange, cream, pink, blue, and the blood flowers. So we've made it up to the to St. Declan's church and graveyard and have a look at what's here. Isn't that amazing? And I'm going to put in a few still photos as well, but way off in the distance you can see the ocean and the cliffs. But what I'm going to do is we'll have a look at a few graves. The church and a bit of scenery as well. So <clears throat> I just hope the audio is a bit better because <laughs> Where I am now, it's very open and it's quite windy. You can see there on the ground all the markers. Once again, any more information I get, I'll pop it on over the video. So, I just want to show you this because there is a good few people about and I want to get it in when there's no one around. I'll go over near. This is amazing. There it looks like a woman with a baby and what looks like a man on a throne with a sword.
my goodness, I've never seen anything like that. There's 1849 there, Elizabeth. And oh, she was only 18 months. And then Emily, 16 years. An infant son. Born and died the 22nd November 1849. That's very sad. And it says something BT, man of Coast Guards, to the memory of his daughter Elizabeth, and then the dates and the dates. Another 1849 here. Nine months. For the wife Emma, for the wife of William. So to the memory of Emma, wife of William, who departed this life. 1849, age 57, and her daughter. And it looks like uh, H.E.M. Henriette, I think, age just nine months as well. So make our way in while it's quiet. And I've noticed they all seem to have been numbered. So I wonder is that to do with maybe a historian or something? 1802 here. William Spratt. 1927. Very large headstone here. 1781. Thomas. Sixty-eight. I think that's a Spratt. It was Jacob Spratt. 1848, age 78. And his daughter. 1860. Edward Kenneth Purcell died 7th of March 1975, second son of Richard and Mary Fuge. So you have to forgive me. There's kids playing around the background. Look at that. Also numbered. Beautiful, isn't it? Stop here. <coughs> Seventeen seventy-seven. Here lies the body of Mr. Thomas 
refuge. Departed this life in 1711, age 53, under Samuel, then was 1777, aged 32 it looks like. We have another fuge here, 1881. Uh, who entered this everlasting rest? which is given to all those who trust in their Saviour, 1892. I think that's a fuge as well, TWM. We have a number on this one as well, 1849, Elizabeth Julia, beloved daughter of John and Francis. these iron rails. Susan Francis, 1849. But you'd be here forever and a day. And it looks like Along there, and would have had maybe sculptures as well, like I showed you just on the end wall. But we'll come along down this way. And guys, I have to show you the views from here are absolutely stunning. Just there, the water, and you can see some of the strands there as well. And my little friend Butterfly has been following me around this last few minutes. Look at that. Age just 26. Loving memory of my dear mother, Nora Foley. 1944. Isn't that beautiful? So that's Nora. Rest in peace, Nora. We'd be here for days on end. So this little church may date from the 8th century. And it's St. Declan's Oratory. And you can see there's... Oh, I can't, you can't really see it now, maybe you can. But over there, there's quite a, a deep hole. I can't see anything else. But there's something on that stone there as well. But, um, Saint Declan is, is actually supposed to be buried in here, or he's at least rumoured to be buried in here. So I'm going to take a short walk now up, back up along and show you one more headstone. And I'm going to have to leave then, it's <clears throat> just over an hour and a half, drive back home. Ardmore Round Tower totally dominates the Ardmore landscape. It is a complete tower, but the conical cap is not the original. The 12th century tower has three clearly visible string courses, and each course is offset. This plus the inclination or batter of the walls give the tower its distinctive tapered shape. 
The tower has a total of seven windows and a decorative doorway. Right guys, so I've just come up to the top of the graveyard and look at this. In loving memory of Agnes, wife of the late Deputy Surgeon General Sampson Roch and daughter of the late Bartholomew John Brown, Essex, passed away April the 2nd, 1922, until daybreak. And that has beautiful designs on it. It's like a Celtic cross. And uh, we're coming up to very late evening, but it was far too busy to be able to walk around quietly and see everything. Sacred to the memory of Marjorie, the dearly loved wife of Lieutenant Colonel H.S. Roach, R.A.M.C. and daughter of the late R.H. Power of Lismore, died May 1919. That's a stunning memorial there. And behind her there we have Samson Roach, Deputy Surgeon General, Woodbine Hill, age 77 in 1906. Behind Marjorie, then we have George Butler Roach, Captain Royal, Waterford Artillery. Died at Totland, March 1905, and he was 33. So he went off quite late in the evening. <coughs> In loving memory of Catherine Fitzgerald, Odell Lodge, 1923, widow of Thomas Fitzgerald. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me now, another noise there. And the views are really stunning. So I'm just going to walk down here to the back. There's another memorial down here. And it's for the SS Ari. And I'll show you that now. <clears throat> so we have a plaque here. And it explains, and that's the crew, the crew members of the SS Ari who perished. 21 year old there, Stefan, Jose, William, Edward, Ludwig, Marikin, Antonio, Alexander. And it happened on the 8th of February 1947. So they drifted out onto rough seeds and cold easterly wind carrying snow showers with it. Out of nine men, eight died due to hypothermia. Afraid of the dead, a sailor of only 19 years of age pushed the bodies overboard and drifted on finally coming around on the shore. And so then the, over the next coming days, the crew members were washed ashore between Ardmore, Monetary and Yole. And so we have an anchor there and three crosses and it just says to the memory of the crew of the SSRI who perished off the Ardmore coastline in February 1947. So there's another couple of headstones here I want to show you and the dark is not too far away now at this stage. So this lovely one is for the Burke families. John, Bridget, Mary Ellen, Patrick, John, Baby Bridget, Catherine. John died in 1930. 
Bridget 1913, Mary Ellen 1956, Patrick 1969, John 1967, Baby Bridget 1926 and Catherine 1992 and they're all remembered there. Beautiful memorial here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is erected to the memory of Mac Dane, Mary, daughter of Sir Joseph Neil McKenna, and Esther Louisa Lady McKenna, born the 1st of October 1848 and died 31st of August 1861. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for us such is the kingdom of God. And that's just a verse from the Bible. That's beautiful. bring it to this one then and wait till you see the detail on this and down here it says from Dr. and Mrs. Gwindyer or Gwindyer USA to Annie 1926 and it's almost like a, a compass or something but look at the, the rail and right around it There's a 1926, and that says Anya, which would be Annie in English. And it's there's something else here. Then I think this is a looks like Pontius 1904, and the rest is it's all in Irish actually, and all of this, but it's absolutely. Amazing to detail, and this is marble here and iron. I'll come to this one then. That's a beautiful statue. Look at the clouds up over, and the detail on that. Says it's erected by James Ryan, and this is all in Irish. There's a 1904 at the bottom, all right, and it's Siobhan Ní Brown or something like that, anyway. Um, yeah, so it's all in Irish. So I've made my way up to the top. And it's this one. John Corbett, the Cora. Died the 28th of September 1952, aged 57. 
his sister Mary, 1967 aged 81, his wife Margaret, 91 aged 84, and his daughter Mary, 2010 aged 75, and his son John, February 2020 aged 83. And I'm just going to come around to have a look at the photos. And they're gorgeous photos and we have the wreath and shape of an anchor with fresh flowers. We have the a cross here of our Lord and a little stone painted with the tower in the background there and it says my nan and just zoom that in because it's it's beautiful. My nan. And what a beautiful place to be buried in. Right guys, so I leave you on this Friday the 13th and head home back to Wexford. I'm kind of almost, I suppose borderline Waterford Cork. It's about an hour and a half to get home well worth it and I'll certainly come back again um, and read some more headstones but to everyone that's buried here rest in peace and to all of you God bless